Shalom Akim. First and foremost, I want to give all praises and all glory to the true and living power, which is Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Recha, Kadash. Yahweh is the true name of the Heavenly Father. Yahweh Shai is the true name of His only begotten Son, and there's no God beside them. And I want to give double honors to the apostles and elders of the Great Millstone, Ruel, who've taught us His truth through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashem, Shai, and honors and salutations to the elect Akim, doing these works in sincerity and in truth. So, pretty much, this is just uh, addressing. This dude Nate, you know, who um he's he's doing a lot lately. All right, he's sitting here lying. He's reaching. He's blaspheming. Like Apostle Tahar said, it might it very well he, he's barking up the wrong tree, you know, and it might be another death within Israel if he keeps it if he keeps his shit up. You know the Lord, which is what the Lord is gonna do, you know, just like uh, Tazadakia. The Lord is going to do that, man. So anyway, what he said was he compared the stimulus checks to the 501c3. Now, Nate knows damn well, full, totally well, what the 501c3 consists of and that it has nothing to do. It's not even comparable to a stimulus check. He's just reaching. All right. So I'm going to play this video, play another video. Get some scriptures and that's going to be it, man. You know? So, this I'm playing this video to uh, 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 show that the 501c3 is nothing compared to getting a stimulus check. You know, 501c3 is a stranglehold. It's hush money. A stimulus check is... A stimulus check ain't going to make us stop teaching Yahweh Bashem It ain't going to make us stop teaching anything out from the scriptures. But the 501c3 does. So, let's get into it. Living here is dependent upon uh, the offerings that come in from Liberty Fellowship. The the future of and this is from an Edomite. You all right? This is from an Edomite. The Edomite has more integrity than you right now, Nate. This fellowship, whether it continues, is going to depend upon whether people that support it will give uh, to the support of this ministry. So there's no question we need it, but it's not going to be tax deductible under 501c3. We're not going to play that game. We're not. I did that for 35 years. I, I, I you know, I could tell you, I could tell you some horror stories of what that produces. And I got to tell you, that I, I didn't, I didn't even realize the depth of the uh, stranglehold, mm, stranglehold that those tax codes hold over pastors and deacons and trustees oh. and church officers and the churches themselves until until not too long ago and when when we moved here and started this ministry it, it's and i'm not going to give you all the details it's not necessary that i do that but see See, I'm going to stop it right there. He said, first off, it holds a stranglehold over your head. But he's not going to get into the details of how, because if he does, they're going to come for his ass, man. You know, they're going to light his ass up. So that's why he kept it at that. He can't say too much. But here it is. He said it, that it holds a stranglehold over your head. What type of stranglehold over the things that you can and cannot say? And Tazadaka is the example. You know, when you want to turn around and you want to do the right thing, right? You want to teach the right thing. Now he's going to, all right, bet, I'm going to set this up. Tax evasion. You know, you think Nate want to do all that, all that time? Okay. You think Nate want to go from um, having his own yacht and traveling and this and that to jail? So, no, he ain't going to uh, 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 go around and, and violate his, his uh, 501c3 stranglehold, man. See, I'm gonna keep playing. The 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 depth of uh, of intimidation mm. and evil mm. that is held over the necks and the heads mm. of churches uh, relative to the 501c3 tax exempt status cannot be overstated. Oh, so well, come on, man. There is intimidation. There is evil. That's being held against Nate if he violates that 501c3 charter, man. 
as far as things that he can and cannot say. Because you had this one Jake, he he made that video. He said prominent and head passes are going to come together so, so that they can discuss the things that they can and that they cannot say within church. Right. So that's one of the things that is held over your head. And there's fear and there's intimidation. Like he just said, if Nate ever thinks about violating that 501c3 charter. Now, is, there, is that the same thing with the stimulus check? Absolutely not, man. So, Nate, you just need to stop. Stop, man. But, you know, but you're doing the deeds of the fucking devil, man. Good. It's worse than you think it is. Oh, worse than you and think it is. And it's worse than I thought it was. Um, I, 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 I'm just here to tell you by living testimonial that it is worse than you can possibly imagine. And so when wow. you think about these churches... Hey. And why are they why are they refusing to speak out? Why are they not taking a stand? Why are they not standing up in the pool? See, so you look at these churches and you think about why they not standing out. You know, why they acting so fucking sleep? Because there's that fear and an intimidation that we can't even imagine that's being held over their heads, man. For all we know, the, the uh, 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 Babylon could have took out uh, Tazadaki. Like, oh, yeah, you violating a 501c3? Boom, I'm going to give you tax evasion, and then I'm going to murder you in prison. For all we know, it could have been them. Because the way he's talking, he's like, yo, it's, it's, you can't even imagine the amount of fear that's being held over your head when you're under that contract. And remember, Nate is under that contract, so come on, man. But it's in telling their people about the sheriff's first bill, why are they not talking about the freedom issues, the constitutional issues of our state and of our community? It's because of that 501c3 tax-exempt status that's held over their head by the Internal mm. Revenue Service mm. that was put in place back in the 1950s by the, a Texas senator who then became later president of the United States by, by the name of Lyndon Baines Johnson. We can, that's who we owe this 501c3 monstrosity to, mm. is to Lyndon Johnson. And his goal was to silence the pulpits and mm. to keep them out of politics. And you know what? He succeeded. He succeeded. To the point that our churches today are, for the most part, totally irrelevant to anything that's going on mm. in Washington, D.C., or Helena, or anywhere else in the political world. Most churches are totally irrelevant mm. to anything that's going on. And that's why... <laughs> that's why, he, at first, that's why Nate was teaching. There's no Jacob's trouble. You don't got to worry about none of that. But now that old hell is breaking loose. His people's got the eyebrows up. Yo, um, Nate, something's fishy here. Come on, man, give me some. Nate's probably out with the, with the, with, with, with the iris. Come on, man, give me some leeway, please. I'm going to lose all of them, please, man. Let me say something. See what I'm saying? So now he's all, oh, yeah, we're going to go through this. We're going to go, man, get out of here, Nate. Man, stop, bro. Just stop, bro. Come on, man. It's easy. Like the brother Shaw be quoting from the movie. It's too easy, man. Just stop, bro. Come on, man. All these things continue to happen, and that's why Christians hold up their hands in dismay and say, you know, why is this happening? Why are we letting this happen? It's because the pastors and churches are strangled by that 501c3 tax-exempt status. Mm. So we're, we're going to do our best to, to not go that route, and we're not going to go that route. If we fail and we're not able to continue Liberty Fellowship because of lack of support and people want a tax deduction for their gift, then so be it. But we are not going to compromise the truth or the message of right for the sake of a tax-exempt status from the Internal Revenue Service. There you have it, man. All right? And this is an Edomite with more integrity than you, boy. So just stop, man. All right? He said, I don't need your fucking hush money. I want to teach, well, his, his truth. You know, whatever the hell he's teaching, he's more so in, into the politics and, and, and into America and to his rights. So he want to teach his truth. There's the truth. You know, of course, we know that there's the truth, but he want to teach. He want to be free to teach whatever he want to teach. All right. Without having an IRS breathing down his, his damn neck in case he says one of the wrong things, man. He said he ain't going to be compromised of teaching the truth, man. All right. So there you go, Nate. You're compromised, boy. And the stimulus check doesn't compromise us. It doesn't hold us back. You know, it doesn't do anything. There's no IRS breathing down our necks from teaching this truth. So just stop, man. It ain't, it ain't comparable, man. 
And this is from off this brother's page. Um, here's another one that he was talking. Oh, this is what I was talking about before. How does President Obama get to 270 electoral votes? Well, his clearly strongest voter group is African Americans, and hundreds of preachers and other religious leaders are going to get a pep talk of sorts from members of the Congressional Black Caucus on how to combat the recent rise in voter ID laws. I'm joined now by the chairman of the Congressional Black Caucus, Congressman Emanuel Cleaver, Democrat from Missouri, who is also an ordained minister. Congressman, it's good to see you. Good morning. Good to be with you. So you've got this big summit tomorrow. Essentially, what is your message to several hundred clergy members, I understand, who will be there? Yes, we'll have uh, representatives from nine denominations who actually mm. pastor somewhere in the neighborhood uh, of about uh, 10 million people. Ooh, the big guys. And uh, we are going to, first of all, uh, equip them with the information they need to know uh, about what they can say and what they cannot say uh, in the church uh, that would violate their 501c3 status with the IRS. In fact, we're going to have the IRS administrator there. We're going to have the Attorney General Eric Holder there. Uh, we're going to have the lawyers uh, organization from around the country, the ACLU, all giving ministers guidance on what they can and cannot do. Whew. Oh, my goodness. And he said, but, but, but remember what that Edom I said. He said, you cannot imagine the amount of fear and intimidation that's there. So why you got the IRS coming to your meeting? Because they're going to let you know that, yo, if you do, if you fuck up, we're going to get your ass for tax evasion, man. You know, and then you have the attorney general there just for his presence, you know, to, to, to try and instill fear within these people, man. So, Nate, boy, you need to stop, man. You know, you, you borderline blaspheme in the name of the Lord. You double minded on the vaccines. OK, because that's probably part of what you can and cannot say. One thing you can one thing they probably said, you can't speak on our vaccines. I wish you would. I'll bust your ass, man. So I'm going to just get one scripture, man. You know, uh, uh, Lord wants edifying, man, you know, to show that Nate is reaching, boy, and you're done. This is Job 15 and 34. For the congregation of hypocrites shall be desolate and fire shall consume the tabernacles of bribery. See, so they bribe you with money. But now that you took the money, you got to obey their uh, 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 rules. All right. Um. So, you know, that's pretty much it, man. You know, of course, the scriptures also say uh, 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 um, they, they may not have had. Well, let me just grab it. Didn't want to make it make it too long. You know, but the scriptures definitely got to come out. You know, uh, 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 Ezekiel 13 and 4. Well, Ezekiel, yeah, Ezekiel 13 and 4. It's really two. Son of man, prophesy against the prophets of Israel that prophesy and say unto them that prophesy out of their own hearts. See, so you're not prophesying out of the scriptures, man. You're not prophesying out of the truth. You're prophesying out of your own will. All right. Which is in accordance with Esau, the so-called white man. It says, hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord power. Woe unto the foolish prophets. See, Nate is a foolish prophet, man, that have followed their own spirit and have seen nothing. Yeah, man. It says, uh, uh, O Israel, thy prophets are like the foxes in the desert. Ye have not gone into the gaps, neither made up the hedge for the house of Israel to stand in the battle in the day of the Lord. And that's why all of Nate's followers is scared, scared to death. You know, if you was in GMS, you already knew what time it was since the day you came into this truth, man. You know, you already knew what time it was, man. But now Nate's followers are scrambling, and now they're trying to build themselves up. You know, when we was doing nothing except building ourselves up. All right. So, you know, they ain't got it. They ain't it. All right. So.